What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have the RF 24 to 240 millimeter lens and I'm gonna go out at the car show and I'm gonna create video footage and take some still shots for you guys. I'm gonna share all of that with you and then after that we're gonna come back and I'm gonna discuss what I think about using this lens. So let's get right into it. Okay guys, so what I want to do is show you what you can expect from distortion and chromatic aberration out of this lens. And I like to use this picture here because we have a lot of straight lines that go all the way through the frame. So the first thing we're going to do is just get rid of the profile corrections. And right away you're going to see up in the corner here, obviously, that it doesn't actually cover the entire sensor. So because of that, we know that there's going to be, you know, pretty severe distortion correction happening there. So when we apply it, you're going to see that it actually does stretch out over the remaining part of the frame here, but you know that there's going to be some loss in sharpness because of that. So let's take a look at what's going on with chromatic aberration here. So let's get rid of it, and let's take a look at these straight lines. So right away you see pretty severe green, pretty severe red. If I put it back, it goes away. So, you know, easily dealable with but it definitely is presenting itself the further towards the edge of the frame that you get. Okay, fringing out here in the trees. And then as we come here into the center, still there, but not nearly as bad. So, you know, there is a decent amount of chromatic aberration. There is a decent amount of distortion towards the corners. Overall, I don't think if you're not gonna pixel peep onto the images, it's nothing to really worry about, but it is something that you wanna be aware of. It's not L quality images here, but it's very, very sharp. Um, I'm very happy with the overall image quality, but there is more chromatic aberration the closer to the edge of the frame that you get. And there's definitely some pretty severe profile corrections going on here that we want to be aware of. 
So now that we've covered image quality, let's talk about the autofocus. The Nano USM autofocus that Canon has gifted this lens with is literally amazing. It's ultra fast, silent, exhibits minimal to no focus breathing, and it's literally the best autofocus system that I've ever used. The stabilization system that comes with the 24 to 240 mixed with the Canon R6 IBIS works so amazingly well together that I've never experienced such smooth handheld footage, even when zoomed out all the way to 240 millimeters. Overall, I really like this lens, and I find the 24 to 240 millimeter focal length to be a huge advantage out in the field. I bought this lens because I just wanted an overall kind of all around do everything lens so I could not have to carry other lenses with me and I find that it fits the bill perfectly. I love having the ability to go as wide as 24 and I find that 240 gives me enough flexibility to really be able to get a lot of different types of shots that I wasn't able to do when I was using just my prime lenses. If you're looking for a lens that's just an overall general all-purpose lens that you can put onto one of your R-body cameras, I say look no further because the autofocus, stabilization, and image quality are so good in this lens that I think you'll be able to overlook the fact that it only runs at 6.3. I found the image quality and the bokeh when it presents itself to be very pleasing, and I find the overall image quality of this lens to be really, really good. It's hard to find things to criticize about this lens. Other than the aperture, the stabilization, autofocus, and overall image quality are literally amazing. If you were like me and you were holding off purchasing this lens because of the not so impressive aperture ranges, I'm here to tell you don't hold back. Mixed with the fact that the Canon R6 sensor is so good at high ISO performance, I don't think the 6.3 is going to hold me back, and I only think that the zoom range is going to be open up so much more creativity for me. And I'm really, really glad that I have this lens now. The overall construction of this lens is very nice, although it lacks an autofocus switch. So you will have to switch the autofocus if you're using a Canon R6 like me in the menu. Not a big deal, but it is kind of a bummer. It does have a focus and control switch, which allows you to change the function of the control ring on the lens, as well as having a stabilization switch. The overall construction feels very sturdy, and it's heavy enough to feel like a premium lens. I like the way that it feels when you zoom in and out, and the control ring is very smooth and nice. With the overall build of this lens, I think Canon did a really good job. I was actually surprised at how heavy this lens was at 1.65 pounds or 751 grams. It's actually decently heavy in your hands, but I was able to walk around for hours with it and I wouldn't hesitate to go on long hikes if this was the only lens that I was bringing with me. Overall, I find the RF 24-240mm f4-6.3 ISUSM from Canon to be a true all-in-one lens for nearly any shooting situation. The optical image stabilizer, which compensates for up to five stops of camera shake in this lens, is truly impressive, and it's the best that I've ever experienced. Mixed with the IBIS on my Canon R6, it's very easy to get very butter smooth handheld footage. The Nano USM system that they've chosen to use for the autofocus system in this lens is next level amazing. It literally focuses instantly, silently, with virtually almost no focus breathing. It's perfect for video, it's perfect for stills. The Nano USM autofocus system is what everybody wants. This lens also supports dynamic stabilization, which is better for moving around when you're recording videos. You have a minimum focusing distance of 1.6 feet, it has a 72 millimeter filter size. So my general consensus about this lens, guys, is I held off because of the overall not impressive aperture ranges, but I wish that I hadn't. This lens is actually really amazing. If you can look past the fact that yes, Canon is using pretty severe profile corrections in the corners, and yes, this isn't the most impressive aperture range that I've ever seen, everything else about this lens is seriously amazing. I'm really happy that I have it, and as an all-purpose general one-and-done lens, I think it fits the bill perfectly, and a lot of people are going to be seriously happy with it. Anyway guys, I hope that this video helped you. If it did, go below, subscribe, click the notification bell, and I'll see you on my next video.